Welcome to Miami, Florida, where the heat season could come to an end this afternoon. Boston Celtics with a 3-0 lead as we get set for Game 4. Miami turned up the heat against the Celtics in Game 3. But a stirring comeback ended in more pain. Pierce puts it up for the win. Knocks it down. Celtics win. Today, Boston goes for the sweep. We got to take care of business right now, start with the first quarter. Everybody do their job, we're going to do, it's going to take care of itself. Celtics do not want to let down, they want to close this series out today and advance to the second round. But they're here in front of another sellout crowd, hoping that the Miami Heat can avoid elimination. Nobody wants a sweep on their home floor as we look at the Eastern Conference brackets. Both Chicago and Milwaukee, important game three victories to keep their hopes alive. Charlotte in the same predicament that Miami faces down 0-3. Good afternoon, everyone, along with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Breen on hand, Lisa Salters with us as well as we welcome you to game four of this series. And all season long, Mark, the Boston Celtics, they won 50 games, but there were legitimate concerns and doubts about whether they could contend for a championship. All of a sudden, the playoffs start, three impressive victories. Do we have to start rethinking that this team could be a very difficult out? Well, I certainly think so. Early on in the season and during the course of the season, struggled at times. Give them credit. They found their swagger. All of a sudden, the big three playing like they expected to be playing when it mattered most. Kevin Garnett taking advantage of the mismatch on the block. Turnaround jump shot, giving them a post presence. Those guys doing exactly what they do. Ray Allen, when it matters most, moving without the basketball, putting them in position to catch and knock down shots. Two guys of the three. And then Paul Pierce, put the ball in your best player's hand. Talk about recognition. Taking a look at the clock, look at the eyes. The eyes don't lie. Now it's time to dance, make a play. Time and time again, the big three has not only shown up, but showed out. Meanwhile, their opponent, the Miami Heat, they certainly know that no team has ever come back from being down 0-3 in an NBA playoff series to win, but also crushing defeats. They got blown out in game two and just heartbreaking in game three. As a coach, how do you get them fired up to be competitive and fight today? Well, in between game three and four, you have about 36 hours to rebuild your belief in each other, in yourselves, and in what you decide to do as a coach. I think they've done that. I would be shocked if they didn't come out and play very, very hard here tonight. Eric Spolster said their best wins this season came after their toughest losses. Can't get any tougher than what happened in game three. We look at the starting lineups presented by Taco Bell. And a starting five, all impressive in that game three victory led by Paul Pierce with 32 and, of course, the game winner. And for the Miami Heat, they had a lot of good help. Dwayne Wade did, especially from the bench, and Michael Beasley in the fourth quarter. They'll need more help to continue their season here this afternoon. So we're set to go. The odds for the Miami Heat so difficult, but... Eric Spolster says we're not thinking about history. We're thinking about winning one game, and we can handle that. Wade started off so strong the other night, had that strange calf that he couldn't finish, but says he's okay and ready to go. Beasley's first shot of the afternoon. And just like in game three, Miami goes to Wade in the post. He draws the big double team, and the rotation was good. Beasley was left with a contested 20-footer. I like the mindset of, of, of the Heat. It's not about winning four games. It's about winning the one in front of you. So take one at a time. Garnett takes his first shot, puts that one in. That was 
again, so impressive about the Celtics the other day that the big three all look like the big three of old. They've had their ups and downs this year, but all three of them played sharp. And I know that's a fresh welcome sight for Doc Rivers because there have been times during the course of this season that the big three looked old. Rondo back to Allen, fires away, in and out. Allen has been unbelievable the last two games, 25 points in each. These lead to a Royal, back to Richardson, open three, knocks that down. And Mike, I don't think it should be the Celtics' big three anymore. You have to put Rondo in there somewhere, whether it's the big four or, but you have to recognize just what his accomplishments are. No, you're absolutely right. In many ways, he can be the most indispensable player. He's been averaging a ton of minutes, almost 41 a game in the postseason. And he was superb the other day as well. O'Neal thought he got hit. And you make a good point, and I agree with you, because, like you said the other day, he's been their best player all season long. Way down the drive. The reach in and the foul. All right, so we'll switch it to the big four. And Rondo, you see his scoring, but that's during the regular season. He was fourth in the NBA in assists and first in steals. He just had a superb regular season, by far his best. He just keeps getting better and better. That's what I like about you. If I would have said it, we'd had to wait till the next game for there to be a, a, a graphic. You say it, and it's done within seconds. Well, I, I gave him a heads up where I was going. <laughs> it's called intimidation. O'Neal, guarded by Perkins. O'Neal has uh, just been brutal shooting the ball. 5 of 31. Perkins a big part of it. Clinton Richardson, 2 for 2 from downtown. And the same spot. Well, I like what that said is two guys putting the ball on the floor looking to make a play. First O'Neal and then Beast. Rondo calls for travel. And of course for Miami, not that you don't want to, you obviously you want to get a good start to every game, but when you're down 0-3, you don't want to fall behind early because that could be so difficult mentally to try and overcome in that type of a series. Well, as players, you begin to think, okay, well, it's vacation time, and you let your guards down, so you want to immediately have an impact on the ball game right away. Block shot from Garnett, a late whistle, and now a goaltend. First, the Heat were very upset, and then Doc Rivers now doesn't like the call. Hard to tell if the ball hit the backboard first from our, our angle. It didn't hit the backboard, but that's a goaltender. And I'm going to say this. I never, ever was concerned when an official blew his whistle late. It, it doesn't matter if it's late or on time. Just get the call right. If it takes a while to process it, so be it. Garnett did get it before it hit the backboard. That was pretty close, says... Pierce draws the foul. Michael Beasley picks up his first. You see how Beasley responds. And he played very well in the fourth quarter. Had a quiet game up until then. And that was one of the real positives for the Heat in that very difficult loss. Pierce trying to get by Richardson. Good help from Beasley and a turnover. Arroyo on the drive. Scoop layup. Won't go. And Rondo quickly comes the other way. Ray Allen the drive. Inside to Perkins. And Perkins is hit. So first free throws of the afternoon. As Wade picks up his first. And in the offseason to me, Perkins has got to work on being able to catch the ball off penetration and get up quicker into his move versus drop the ball to gather because some of these plays should result in three-point play opportunity. Perkins didn't score in game three, but he did have 12 rebounds, including four offensive rebounds. But Perkins was one that he was saying after the game three victory, that's more like the Celtics. We played Celtics defense, actually said it after game two, we played Celtics defense and our star players are starting to play like star players. And more importantly, other guys are fulfilling their role. So it's a complete package. Everybody is doing their job. And I also think Doc Rivers should be given credit as Wade drives to the hoop and scores. I like 
like his rotation that he's settled on. I think Tony Allen right now is a superior guy coming off the bench than some of their other options. I like him playing as the backup point guard as well, and I like Big Baby Davis being the first guy, first big man off the bench. And Eric Spokes has got to like the way his heat has come out. They are fighting right from the start, a quick eight-point lead, four minutes into the game. Wade. Beasley on the drive and finish. And the Heat with a double-figure lead already. I think they've come to play this afternoon. And you love the way that Beasley has shown up. Putting the ball on the floor, looking to make plays absolutely in an attack mode. Eric Sposa said he wasn't concerned. He really felt his team was going to come out and battle despite the long odds. They've shown that so far. And this is the Beasley that they drafted, a guy that can knock down the shot but also put the ball on the floor and finish over Biggs. Outstanding start for the Miami Heat. showed his players a motivational video that he had made using video from the documentary, the Muhammad Ali documentary, When We Were Kings. It was about Ali's fight with George Foreman. Ali was undersized, very much the underdog. Folks message. Hey, guys, that's the situation we're in right now. Take a listen. Okay. Ali couldn't figure him out. You know, Foreman had so much power, and it was just... It was just so much more uh, than him at that point in his career uh, that he had to figure it out some other way. And he came up, that was the rope-a-dope, okay? You can draw some conclusions, okay, and some similarities. I'm not saying we have to come up with a rope-a-dope. However, come on, it's been five straight or five games in the fourth quarter where we just have not been able to close them, and that's where we're at our best. Spoles for telling his guys, we don't have to get four games today, guys. We can't, but we got to get this one, and we got to finally figure the Celtics out. Mike? Well, at least they're, they're not throwing a rope a dope. They're throwing a left hook to start. As Pierce's shot is good. Pierce knocks down a three. You know, I'm a big boxing fan, so allow me to take this, fella. <laughs> when you talk about Ali against Foreman, Ali had more than one weapon to counter Foreman's arsenal. That's the problem with the Heat. They need more than just Dwayne Wade. Other guys have got to step up to counter this Celtic team. Well, Quentin Richardson certainly has to start three for three from downtown, four for four overall. He's got 11 points already. He had five points in game three. Garnett travels. That's already five turnovers for Boston. Well, Miami's playing the type of defense that they're capable of. They are swarming. And even on the three that Pierce got, it was a well-defended possession. All they needed to do was hit the floor for a loose ball. During the regular season, Miami's defense, one of the best in the NBA. Richardson again gets inside, misses. And again, Rondo quickly brings it up the floor. Good transition defense from the Heat. Drives on Beasley. Nice play from Kevin Garnett for his second field goal. You know, Ron John Rondo was saying after game three, one of the reasons the Celtics better be ready is because this series has been closer than 0-3 as Arroyo knocks it down. Remember, in game one, they were up 14 in the third quarter. They certainly could have won game three. It came down to Wade missed and Pierce hit. End of story. So even though it's a 3-0 series, it's actually been a little more competitive than that. The game two was the blowout. Uh, Going to be a foul. Nope. Uh, defensive three seconds. All against Jermaine O'Neal. So a one shot technical. Uh, could have not have drawn up a better start for the Miami Heat as O'Neal gets an explanation from Billy Kennedy. Here's Ray Allen, 25 points in game two, 25 in game three. Pierce hit the game winner, but Allen hit a huge three late in the fourth quarter. And as you see, the Heat have gotten off to good starts throughout the series. It's part of the rest of the game that's been the problem. 
I don't think they should have to shoot the free throw on a technical. It should just be a point. No, why should you have to shoot the free throw? You're calling an infraction on the other team. Because when they call holding in football, they make them kick a field goal to get the penalty? For Rondo, as the shot clock expires, this is a new one. Uh, no, I really did. I, I, it also speeds up the game. Just give him the point. It makes no sense. It does, too. You just don't want to listen. Richardson again. Not wasting time putting it up, darn it, the rebound. Rondo amongst the league leaders in assists during the playoffs as well. Got a couple of double figure assist games. And has rebounded so well. Pierce got hit and a foul. And Paul Pierce is just, he's starting to look like the Paul Pierce of old. You haven't really been able to say that much this season. Injuries have been a big part of that. But he looked great the other night. And it's sharp early here. And Dr. Mitch touched on it as clearly a foul by Quentin Richardson as Pierce releases the jump shot. Dr. Mitch touched on that prior to the last game. He says, hey, I used Paul Pierce when he came back from injury as if I was going to use him in playoff situations because I wanted him to, to, to begin to develop a, a, a freshness and a bounce and get back to the old Paul Pierce because we knew that he's our go-to guy. Well, his right knee was scoped back in December and then fluid drained in February as Perkins blocks Jermaine O'Neal's shot. And Rondo comes the other way. He also had a thumb injury, a foot injury. Comes up short that time. He's been banged up for a good part of the season. Way the spin move gets inside, can't finish. Rondo quickly the other way. Allen was open, he didn't see him. Pierce tries the extra pass, deflected out by Beasley. I give Rondo a lot of credit. You're watching him in transition time and again. He could have taken shots. But instead, he is trying to get others involved. And when these guys like Garnett and Pierce were injured, he had to put more of a scoring load on his shoulders, and he delivered. But now, with everybody back, he knows his role, and I give him credit for giving up of himself for the good of the team. He has been superb no matter what role has been asked of him. As I foul on Paul Pierce, and let's listen to some coaches' huddles. All right, now, great passion. Stay with the energy, okay? Keep the energy going. We're not doing anything on either end. They're beating you down the floor. They have more energy than you right now, all right? And we're not keeping the game simple. Dwayne Wade made it simple right there. Hard drive, drew the foul, put it in. Doc Rivers was not happy with their defense in game three, despite the victory. Well, I like this. Giving Wade the ball with a head of steam coming right at Ray Allen. Celtics didn't do a good job in shrinking the floor and giving him more than one defender to see. But I like that set for Dwayne Wade with the head of steam. And I think if you're Boston and you see him in that situation time and again, you've got to give earlier help. That foul on Boston against Ray Allen. So Allen picks up two fouls. He'll sit down. Tony Allen comes in. And as we've said, and you mentioned earlier, Tony Allen has been very good off the bench. Seven steals in the first three games. And Glenn Davis also coming in as Perkins takes a breather. 2-3 zone by Miami. Garnett gets it inside. Ball lost by Davis. Still Celtics ball with 14 on the clock. And Miami goes to that 2-3 zone because Tony Allen and Rondo, two, not non-shooters, but mid-range shooters, where they only have to cover, really, Paul Pierce at the three-point line. Rondo finds Allen, who finds the scene. Bad pass from Garnett. That's seven turnovers for the Celtics, and way the finish. Turnovers are... Give the Miami Heat a lot of credit defensively. They make an extra effort play. Chasing down loose ball, active hands, and making multiple effort plays. Eight turnovers, and there's still 3.39 to play in the period. Talk about active hands. You see high hands, guys getting involved in the passing lane. Good things happening defensively. You're able to push the ball and get transition back. And that turnover was caused because Tony Allen, instead of being a spot-up shooter in the 
in the corner where he would have been wide open for a three if that was a Ray Allen. He wants to catch and go. He got to jump on it early, and that led to the turnover. Richardson leans in, draws the foul, count it, and one. Clinton Richardson with 13 points here in the first period. He's averaging eight a game in the series, but has exploded out of the game. Well, shows the shot, steps through, takes a, a little bit of a bump, and really that's not his game. His game is not putting up ball on the floor and creating a shot. And I love what I just witnessed. Paul Pierce going up to Quentin Richardson on the line and they're trash talking each other. One thing about Quentin Richardson, he's not going to back down from Pierce. I know you're a heck of a player. I know you're a star, but I'm here to fight. I'm going to compete on both ends of the floor no matter what. There's no give right there. He says, look, I'm at the foul line. I just made the basket over you. I know you're the truth, but I also can get it done. What do you think Pierce was saying he to said, him? He said to him, are you talking to me? That's exactly, you read his lips, that's what he said. Because, you know, Quentin Richardson was doing a split, like a splitster, mumbling it. I like that. Well, of course, Richardson called both Pierce as Chalmers gets away from Davis. Way to finish. Richardson and Paul, both Pierce and Garnett, actresses that spurred that incident at the end of game one that caused the suspension of Garnett in game two. And Mike, it's the zone that has totally changed the game around again because of only one range shooter on the floor. I like this move by the Miami Heat. Thomas almost the steal on that one. The Celtics call timeout. They have more turnovers than shot attempts. Nine turnovers with still 2.48 remaining here in the opening period. Well, again, 2-3 zone. This is what Chalmers does best. He's a steal guy, and then I like it. Giving it up to Wade and rewarding the star player to make sure he gets off. 9-0 run by Miami. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Beautiful afternoon in Miami, Florida, and a beautiful start for the Heat, up by 12. As Dwayne Wade and the Heat forcing turnovers. Boston shooting 62%, but they can't hold on to the ball. Getting it done on the defensive end, active hands, and then off to the races. Time and time again, this is the way that the Miami Heat team will give themselves a chance to win and get back in this series defensively. And I love this. Chasing shooters off the of screen is not just the guy initially, but you build the wall. Three guys in position off the catch and then multiple effort plays. Getting back into the pitcher. Outstanding job early on for the Heat defensively. Boston struggled with turnovers early in the regular season. They were actually one of the worst in the NBA. Much better second half of the year as Rondo misses that jumper. Wade on the attack, drives, blocked by Tony Allen, and then Wade got hit. And Wade is shaking up a bit on the play. Coach, you talked about something where Chalmers gave the basketball up as we take a look at the block. Wade upset that no call was, was transition dunk. I watched it last night. Westbrook did the same exact thing for Durant. That's what you want to do. Find a way to get your star players a taste of knocking down baskets, whether it be in transition or easy play. And you know what? That's not easy for young players to realize that. I give both these younger guards credit for realizing that situation. Rondo trying to draw the foul. Has one the rebound. That was Wade. Wade goes right at Michael Finley. Count it and one. Well, he continue their assault. They're up by 14. What I love about this, this is almost a running back move. Looked like he's going to go to the middle, crosses over, outstanding job of getting the defense on his heels and then finish. That doesn't look like a foul there. That looks like a heck of a play by Wade. Michael Finley agrees with you, Mark. But Wade will go and get a chance for the three-point play. He was superb in game three with 34 points, eight assists. And this is the largest lead of the series for the Miami Heat. 12 straight points. The bench 
pitch out there right now. The only starter is Rondo from Boston. Now, this is interesting. Going back away from the zone. And I think it's because Paul Pierce is out of the game. So look at that perimeter. There's not one perimeter guy that's going to just take you one on one. And I think the way that they're defending the perimeter guys, they're really zoning them. They're not chasing them out wide. They're playing them in the paint area, forcing these guys to make shots. Tony Allen took a wild shot there. Joel Anthony tracks down the loose ball. Elite shooting, 57% from the field. Wait, oh, beauty! 31 to 14. Wade with 14. Finley jump shot. Gets it to go. I think Miami should try to re-sign that guy in the offseason. <laughs> <laughs> well, so much made here in South Florida that with the Heat should lose this game. Will it be Dwayne Wade's final game as a member of the Heat? Allier, ball knocked away. Still loose. Wallace comes up with it. Well, you can't have loose possessions right now. Finley off the mark. Haslam. Another mainstay here. He's an unrestricted free agent after this season. He's been, as people like to use to portray the heart and soul of this team for a number of years. I like this. Rather than going two for one, slow it down. Things are a little hectic. Get a quality possession of the other hand. Wade steps back. And well short. Back clock turned off. Richardson with 27 of the 31 points. He'd have a foul to give. And there it is. And of course, that was a big topic after game three, where they had a foul to give, but chose not to foul Paul Pierce. And Eric's post just said, that's on me. Well, that was his decision not to do it. Darrell Wright did not commit the foul. Maybe if Wade was out there, it's a little different story. Well, I think, again, in that situation, you may have different levels of trust in different players to be able to execute a foul to give, which seems simple, but giving it at the right time without allowing the offensive player to get into the act of shooting is a little bit more tricky than it may appear. Well, to me, that's a cop-out. The reason why is because you put yourself in position to be prepared for those moments. As a coach, those are things you work on so that you, you are able to trust five guys on the floor to, to execute the plan. Rondo, final second spins, flips it up at the buzzer, and it floats in. Nice move from Rondo. And what was an otherwise difficult first quarter for Boston. Not so for Dwayne Wade in the heat. Wade had 14. Britton Richardson had 13. And most importantly for the Heat, they forced nine turnovers that led to 16 Miami points. It's an elimination game for the Miami Heat. But a strong start. First quarter is done. 13-point lead. Welcome back to Miami where the Celtics are down by 13. Doc, they jumped out on you early. What did you like about that, that first quarter? Well, I didn't like anything, really. Uh, uh, I mean, we had no patience on the offensive end. It was like everybody came out offensively to try to make, make a knockout blow by themselves. You got to play together. And defensively, we had no urgency. We, they got the first eight shots with no hands in the face. Big uh, first quarter for Dwayne Wade. You've been talking about your defense against him all series. What do you have to do differently against him? Well, he's Dwayne Wade. You know, um, I'm more concerned really about those other four guys on their team because they're having an impact while Wade is having an impact. And they both can't have one. So we got to stop one or the other. All right, thank you very much, Doc. Mike. All right, Lisa, Doc Rivers is one who says, let's wrap up the series as quickly as possible. He remembers back in 2003, he was the coach of the Orlando Magic. First round, they were up 3-1 to one against the Detroit Pistons and lost three in a row and lost that series. Granted, it's not 3-0, but he has seen teams come back in a playoff series firsthand. But they were the far superior the team. Pistons the Pistons yes. were. That was a chip. And the modern day or latter day Tito's at that time. <laughs> Ray you know, Allen, it's that shot. You know, they just didn't have the depth of talent that, that Detroit had at that time. I think the concern is you don't want to give this Miami Heat team confidence. 
This is a this is a group that's been struggling confidence wise up until this point. You don't want to give them a bounce and a swagger where they believe that they can make plays and have a chance in this series because they have a star that can take over. Ball kicked out of bounds. Shot clock reset to 14. There's Dwayne Wade who's sitting right now. Now normally he sits in the second and the third, but those were his numbers in those quarters. Well, yeah, he starts off, his minutes are a little bit less than both the second and the fourth. But those are huge numbers. And I think one of the reasons is, as we saw in the first quarter here, his opportunities in transition diminish over time. The Royal had to put it up as the shot clock expired. Here's Nate Robinson. He's only played in eight minutes in this series as Davis goes in. And fouled by Haslam. So free throws coming up for Big Baby Davis. E. Robinson off the bench here as Davis goes to the free throw line. He had that terrific game too when Garnett was suspended. But he is, whether he's scoring or not looking for a shot, he's been very good energy for this team. And I like that play by Nate Robinson right there. In New York, he might have tried to toss that off the backboard and reverse dunk it. <laughs> you don't really know what he was going to do because he was playing for show versus playing for a goal. And here, just a solid, simple, fast break decision that leads to two free throws. And I also like this move by Eric Spolstra about getting the scorer on the floor in Beasley because with Haslam out there and the two point guards, it's just hard to score. And they've worked hard to build up a lead. You don't want to give it back in just a couple minutes. And Haslam also sitting because of two fouls. But they had four other players scoring double figures in game three. That was such a key element in their preparation. Three of them off the bench. Darrell Wright had a terrific game. He had 15. Shot clock down to four. Wright's going to have to put one up. With Wallace in his face, knocks it down. Tough shot for Darrell Wright. And he answers the call. He had a big three in the fourth quarter late in the game. And I'm pressing his best game of the series. He gave them great minutes in game three on both ends of the floor. Did a great job having an impact on the game as soon as he was called. Wallace misses. Davis and Chalmers fight, and good play from Chalmers to take it away. That's a great engaged rebound by Chalmers going up over the top of Big Baby Davis. Chalmers answers back to the other end. Chalmers played well off the bench in game three. He had 10 points. A 13-point Miami lead. They've been up by as many as 17. Robinson bumped by Beasley. That's two on Beasley. And you talk about how you're going to score. Find a way to score. Clock dwindling down. Right elevates over the contested hand of Rasheed Wallace. And then in transition, after getting a big time rebound, Chalmers gets into the seams. The ability to finish over too big. And Rasheed Wallace has got to step up there and be the defender he's been his whole career. He's got to block that shot. Ball well, knocked off the leg of Robinson. Good hands from Arroyo. To say that was a foul. Point guard position has been obviously in favor of the Celtics with Rondo's play. Arroyo and Thomas both out there together as Joel Anthony is fouled by Wallace. So Anthony will go to the line. Anthony, one of those just non-stop energy players as we look at the NBA calendar. Uh, TNT tonight. Dallas at San Antonio. The Spurs now with a 2-1 to one edge there. Denver and Utah. Jazz could try and take a commanding lead. NBA TV. Uh, Atlanta at Milwaukee. And the next Sunday, who knows? It could be some Game 7s. It could be some Game 1s as the 2010 playoffs continue. Pierce back in. Joel Anthony, 27 years old, wasn't drafted, born and raised in Montreal. He's played for the Canadian national team. Eric Spolster said he is one of the hardest working players he's ever seen. Didn't really have the skill when he first came into the NBA, but he's worked so hard, he plays so hard, that he's gotten himself minutes. He's a good defender, and he's a good screen setter. And a foul. With 9.08 remaining going to go against Joel Anthony, so Wallace will go to the line. Now, Wallace is such an important part 
coming into the season for this team. He did not have what you would call a good season. But if they have any hopes of still contending and winning a championship, they could really use some consistent play from him, Mark. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Struggled during the course of the year. Didn't bring to the table what they expected. But I, I, I point to baseball. You know, it matters in October. Are you going to find a way to get it done when it matters most? I think people in Boston and around this league will forget if Rasheed Wallace plays big in crucial moments. But up to this point, he's been a disappointment. Well, you look at Wallace here. You look at Vince Carter in Orlando. Shaq in Cleveland. All the top players, Ron Artest of the Lakers, on the contending teams. And that's where it's all going to come down to, how they perform in the postseason. He's had a quiet one, Wallace had thus far. By the way, you've now done a boxing analogy, a baseball analogy. Very versatile. Thank you very much. I'm glad you noticed. Cricket's next. <laughs> Beasley. Lead back to 14. Here's one of the ball. And right trying to post him right to the shot in the groin. He's a little shaken up. He went Burton, and then Ray Allen was out of bounds when he caught it. 11 turnovers now for the Boston Celtics. And we'll have a timeout. Early second quarter. Heat trying to keep their season alive. Stuart Scott in the studio with you. The Wendy's Real Deal performer, the eighth-seeded Oklahoma City Thunder. They swept both games at home and have tied the series at two games apiece with the defending champion Lakers. A pivotal Game 5 in L.A. on Tuesday. Let's send it back now to South Beach. Back in Miami. Three and a half gone by here in the second. The Heat with a 14-point lead. Here in game four, they've had a terrific start. If you look at our Shrek 3D storyline, it's the Western Conference brackets, and everybody talking about last night in Oklahoma City, the Thunder just pummeled the Lakers. That series tied at two games apiece. What'd you guys think? I thought Oklahoma just took away the will of the Lakers. To me, it was an embarrassing performance by the Lakers. And, 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 and like I said before, if Kobe Bryant doesn't have his foot on the gas pedal, other teams look forward to that. The problem is when he's got it going on in an attack mode, then you have your hands full. There's no answer for it. Other than that, you can beat the Lakers. Well, I think they were in a building as Beasley showed great handles to get to the rim. They were in a building that's the best building in the NBA as far as home court advantage right now in Oklahoma City. And they're playing a very good team. And you know what? They had the same thing happen to them last year where they went on the road to, to Houston, lost both of those games in round two. And I just think they just got to play a good home game. Wow! Thomas to Beasley! Lead! Beasley picking up where he left off in game three with being aggressive offensively. Wallace against Anthony. Pierce, the offensive board, stripped by a royal, but a foul. And Pierce goes to the line. Talk about giving Wade help. How about running the lanes and making plays? Upstairs, alley you pass from Chalmers to Beasley. Outstanding job of executing in transition. And I'm most impressed, not just offensively, but the way that Beasley is playing on both ends of the floor. Defensively jumping out in pick and roll situations, forcing the guy to go around him, paying attention to detail. There's no excuse after this. When you look at film like this, you say, don't tell me you can't play defense. Yeah, and I liked how he was just looking up at his highlight up on the scoreboard, watching his lob, and he got that wry smile like, I'm good. <laughs> Almost like you after you make a good point when you just listen to your own headset. <laughs> <laughs> that happens so rarely. Here's goes one of two. Well, the Celtics down big early in this one. Last time the Celtics overcame a lead of 17 or more, as Chalmers calls a timeout, it was back in 2008, game four of the NBA Finals, when they had that spectacular comeback against the Lakers. They've got a big deficit here in game four. Obviously just the first round, but the Heat, superb to start in this elimination game, 42 to 25. If we play together, we're going to win. 
Everybody wants to win tonight, all right? Everybody. But if you think you're going to do it yourself, that I'm going to make it happen, we're not going to win. We got to do it together, all right? We got to do this together, one basket at a time. Don't overreact to the score, and we got to do our jobs. Come on, guys, you got to do it together. Together, together. Well, he's going to break out the song there at the end. Oh, that's only a two with Jeff Van Gundy. <laughs> No, don't they do that on those NBA commercials now, where they take a statement from the press conference, right. and then they're putting it together. No, no, oh, no, 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 stop, <laughs> stop, please. Can you sing that antenna? Antenna 15, 15 feet away oh, no. from us. See, I knew that. I know I knew that joke. You're bringing an old school joke. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ray Allen has just picked up his third foul, and Michael Beasley continues his aggressive play. And as he goes to the free throw line, eight points for Beasley on four or five from the field. I can't believe you just tried to sing. Your family will be so embarrassed with the idea of you attempting to sing a song. You don't have to be good at something to attempt it. See, you're like the type of guy that you don't want any participants unless you're going to be the best. See, I'm, I'm willing to participate even when Simon, Simon, what's that guy's name? Simon Powell. Powell like, will ridicule me. I'm fine with that. I'm fine. You can be Simon. I'm Theodore. We can arrange to have you audition on that show if you want. I'm going dancing with the stars. That's a pull up. Back to the 2-3 zone again. There's only one shooter on the floor. Garnett. Garnett, 3-for-3. Three three. He's starting to look like the Garnett of old. He granted, he's not going to look like the Garnett of a few years ago, but he's got a nice fluid rhythm going. Well, scoring in the post, also knocking down the mid-range jump shot, and that's when you realize you're getting your legs back. Burrell right misses. Joel Anthony, good job on the boards, and Garnett couldn't hold on to it. And I like what Miami's doing tonight against Garnett's show on the high pick and roll. Instead of trying to run Beasley to a spot up position, they're rolling him to the rim, which is creating good shots for he and for the perimeter players. Beasley, nice move, just couldn't finish with the right hand. Rondo, perfect bounce pass to Tony Allen. Oh, that was a beauty. What I love most about that is the way that Allen ran the floor, got rid of the ball, and then full steam ahead, putting himself in position to get it back and knock down the lane. Lead cut to 14 as we approach the midway point of the second. Chalmers trying to break free. Wade goes back door, goes to the rim. Shot won't go. Anthony fights and saves. Joel Anthony providing that energy. Wade's pass deflected off the rim. Wade. Tried to throw it off Rondo. Quickly ahead is Tony Allen. Allen will get hit hard by Anthony. Looked like Allen was passing off at the last second. And as Anthony came in. Allen a little slow to get up. That's a good play to prevent what would have been a layup. Good hustle from Joel Anthony at both ends. The official is discussing. You want to get back into the ball game. This is how you get the rebound, pushes it, and then look at the sprint, the delivery on point from Rondo, and then Allen finishing. But those are the type of plays where you continue to make them. You can get back into the ball game. I think the officials were talking about whether or not it was in the act of shooting. This is the right call. But that is the 15 foul, so he's going to shoot anyway. Quentin Richardson comes back in for Miami. And I also like it, too. It gives Tony Allen the chance to gather himself so the Celtics don't have to take a timeout. Tony Allen back in the rotation. This is his sixth year of first-round pick. Out of Oklahoma State, a late first-round pick. He's had all sorts of injury problems, knee woes early. Last year, he had left thumb surgery. This year, he missed a ton of games because of an ankle injury. Only played in 54. When he's been healthy, he's a good, tough, hard-nosed player, a good defender, not certainly a pure point guard or a shooter, but he plays with a real toughness. I like him as a backup point guard. I, I think he's got a good enough handle. He's got a speed and quickness and athleticism that when Rondo's out for the few minutes that happens, I think gives them their best chance to win. 
Chalmers misses. Rondo comes out of the pack. Rondo on the drive. Oh, nice move. Avoiding the contact with Richardson. And then puts it in with the one hand. Alley up to Beasley. And they call a foul out for Pierce on the pass. And that's three on Pierce. So Allen and Pierce each with three. Pierce is going to have to sit down as Finley will come back in. Well, this is a good push by Rondo. And then to be able to slide your body right and still finish up over the top, that's just great body control and great touch. I think these are, this is a crucial spurt for the Miami Heat. You build the cushion. The last couple of minutes, bad possessions offensively. You've got to find a way to execute on the offensive end and don't allow this Celtic team to get back into this ball. Without playing them, the last thing you want to do is play so well, get the crowd fired up, and then the lead window looks as high as 17 as Thomas has it deflected off his leg. That's why I think they're better off putting one four, putting the ball in the hands of Wade, and then getting quality offense with his decision-making ability, whether it be for himself or others. But you want to close out this second quarter in the right way offense. The biggest lead was 18. And a hold is called for a more free throws in the penalty. Quentin Richardson calls for it. That, that's a bad foul in the penalty. That leads to a really good free throw shooter getting two free throws. Finley will go to the line. Finley signed by the Celtics after being let go by the San Antonio Spurs. Well, to be fair, he, he asked out. Right. He wanted out, and they granted it to him. Finley knows Doc Rivers a long way back. They're both from Chicago. Both went to the same high school, Proviso East. In fact, one of the cheerleaders on Doc Rivers' his team in high school was Michael Finley's sister. He remembers Finley coming to all the games as a little kid. And Finley, of course, wants a great score. Well, a little helper off the bench, and they just love his character, especially for the younger players. Gets the free throw there to make it a nine-point game. Celtics have scored nine in a row after being badly outplayed for much of the half. They're creeping back into it. Heat fans still hopeful. Their team down 0-3, but they lead by nine. You can follow the NBA playoffs wherever you are with NBA Game Time Playoff Edition, the official mobile app of the NBA. Log on now to NBA.com backslash game time for up-to-date playoff highlights, scores, schedule, stats, scenarios, and more. The Cotton Candy Fest here at the American Airlines Arena. I couldn't eat all that. Like, I could only do a half a, half a stick. Then, or, or I'd get sick when I was a kid. I think I'd get sick on the first bite, but they love it. I would love to see you and Stan as kids sharing cotton candy together. <laughs> you know, my mom, she had the greatest it was, it was cut and choose. Somebody cut, the other one chose. Like, you know, so it was going to be even. Brilliant parent. <laughs> Can't imagine what Bill and Sidney had to go through all those years. Under five to play first half here in game four. Nice entry pass, and Wade able to put it in. Good job out of the timeout, executing a play where you get yourself a quality look. And that's usually for a big man. That duck in by Wade is something that if you run for big guys, they're putting him in the post against Tony Allen. Chalmers got his hands on it, but it deflected right to Finley. Garnett's jump shot, short. Wade, a strong first half double, nearly stolen by Allen. Almost stolen again by Allen. They've been talking defensively. That ball almost came in our lap, my, uh, Mark. Mike Green flinched. He thought Tony Allen was coming into his lap. Was not ready to take the charge. Rondo almost with the steal. Yes, he comes up with it. Rondo gets inside and banks to the left. And then Anthony fouls him. And Rondo is down. And there was a collision that pushed Joel Anthony into Rondo. Rondo made a terrific play to get the steal and then got bumped as he was just coming to the basket right before he put up the shot. 
And then Anthony, as you said, Karim didn't. And there's the push. And Wade, so Wade almost pushed Anthony into him. Oh, boy, hit his back hard. And I think Tony Allen bumped Wade. And Wade then pushed Anthony. So the Celtics doctors and medical crew out there to see Rondo. Rondo, who is fearless, going to the basket, fearless, trying to get rebounds inside, playing with the big guys down low. You see that awkward land. And Mike, this is why you want to play as few as games as possible in the playoffs, because you're trying to avoid playing extra games just because of the possibility of injury. Well, Rondo gets up, now looks okay. Not everyone in Miami here at the arena, up on the beach as the Heat lead 45-36 and good to report Rondo is fine and will stay in the game. Rondo, of course, such an important part of this team. His players, teammates love him, including Paul Pierce. He reminds me a lot of Jason Kidd uh, when he was younger, how, you know, if it wasn't his scoring, he dominated you with his passing and his rebounding with his steals, his defense, and, and Rondo uh, can do that. Uh, you know he's he's going to pass the ball, and but it's the other little things that he does so well that, that really go unnoticed. Uh, just the ball pressure, uh, getting to lose balls, uh, offensive rebounding. You know, for a guy in size, uh, I don't think there's nobody in the league like that. And he's still only 24 years old. That first year, he had his ups and downs. The second year, the big question, could the Celtics win a championship as Rondo is the point guard? Will he answer those questions? Last year, he had that spectacular playoff series, nearly a triple-double against Chicago, as Beasley shot his block. And then this year, Rondo's become an all-star. Makes his move inside, nearly stolen. Lost it, they say last touch by Wade. Wade's not arguing that much, so I think it's the right call. Jermaine O'Neal back in for Miami. Garnett, good open look. And Wade the rebound. He hoping to get something from O'Neal offensively. Richardson had the hot start. And O'Neal lost the ball. Wow, is he struggling big time. Perkins barrels into Wade. That's taking a charge. Big Kendrick Perkins knocks him down with a turnover, and that's number 12 for Boston. And I'm watching the Miami Heat offensively right now. And one of the things that's glaring is Rondo is a designated guy to roam around, so he's not defending Mario Chalmers. He's looking to double team whoever catches the basketball. If you're Chalmers, you have to be aware of that and put yourself in position to be aggressive and score the basketball. You cannot allow Rondo to be a roamer. And you've got to give it up to Dwayne Wade. He's not going to take a ton of charges during the season because he has to pace his body. It only has so many physical contacts that you can take in a season. But here in the playoffs, stepping in front, give him credit. Very few star players do that. Rondo looking. Garnett. Oh, nice move from Garnett. A little hit fake to get through the double team. And if I'm Miami, Mark, I'm thinking about going back to the 2-3 zone. They only have Finley on the, on the floor as a shooter, trying to get out more in transition because right now they're really struggling to get quality shots. They've had some droughts as Wade tried the finger roll and draws the foul. Much to the dismay of Perkins. Wade will shoot his third and fourth free throws of the game. Well, Garnett goes into his move. He spins back, gives a little shake, and then steps through. That's very good post patience by Garnett. And I like that last decision. Put the ball in the hands of Wade and allow him to be in an attack mode. It's better because he can read the double teams in a situation and find guys that are being left alone. He's struggling at the line. Coming up at halftime, Stuart Scott. John Barry, Magic Johnson, Michael Wilbon will have the T-Mobile Halftime Report. 
Magic will talk about the Lakers' concerns. The series with the Thunder tied at two apiece. They'll analyze the first half. We'll go through the NBA playoffs. Lots to talk about. As Ray Allen and Paul Pierce remain on the bench for the Celtics with three fouls apiece, yet Boston's chipped away at this lead, and Wade misses both free throws. Rondo is their leading scorer with nine. The ball fake back to Garnett. Garnett's now the leading scorer with ten, and it's a five-point game. Celtics trail by as many as 18 at one point. What's Doc Rivers yelling about? He wants the help to come a little bit earlier. See how Rondo is coming up. Because really, who's on the floor shown the knack right now for scoring the ball? Right. Wild shot as Perkins defends it beautifully. Finley fires a three. Garnett the rebound, the touch pass. And Rondo tiptoes the baseline. On the drive, Rondo won't go. Wait for three. And Philly the rebound. Wade, 7 of 13 from the field, 16 points to lead all scores. Celtics looking to go pick and roll, putting KG in position to pick and pop. Garnett wide open. Can't get that one to fall. Final minute, first half. Wayne Wade and the Heat trying to extend their season. Trying to get on a plane, go back to Boston for game five. Wade, nice fake. Beasley not expecting it. O'Neal, and there's a high percentage shot. Romain O'Neal gets one to go. Richardson on Rondo. Now they switch. Perkins is open. Ball swings. Shot clock winding down. Allen drives in. Blocking foul as O'Neal is in the restricted area. Tony Allen strong to the basket. And chance for a three-point play. Celtics doing a good job of moving the basketball, trusting one another, and then Allen. Great job in the first half. Pierce, Allen in foul trouble. Well, Tony Allen has stepped up on both ends of the floor and gotten it done. And you talk about star players excited about other guys stepping up and fulfilling a role while Pierce on the bench, giving his guy an ovation. Allen had 14 points in game one. As we said, he's amongst the playoff leaders in steals. Had seven through the first three games. And Boston can cut it to four after trailing by 18 here in the first half. The Heat and going through those offensive drafts that scored just four points in the last seven and a half minutes. Beasley the drive. And it's still, do they call a foul? Yes, Billy Kennedy says. So Beasley will shoot two. And you think about it, the Celtics trapping Dwayne Wade in the backcourt. If I'm one of the other four guys on the Heat, I'm excited about that because you're basically disrespecting me. Put yourself in position to catch the ball and make a play. And that's what the Heat guys have to do. You can't just trust that Dwayne Wade is going to beat double coverage. His job is to make a play. He's done his job when you double team him in the backcourt. And I also like Beasley attacking Garnett's feet. Don't feel like you can't put it on the ground and go at a really good defender. See if he can move his feet, attack him, and try to get to the basket. Doc Rivers uses his 22nd timeout. Still has 3.7 remaining to get off a quality shot down the other end. When you take a look, out of bounds, they're trapping Dwayne Wade. Well, somebody else has got to make a play. I've done my job. I love what he does. Get rid of the basketball. And Beasley does a good job, like you said, Coach, of attacking Kevin Garnett, putting himself in position to get the foul and get to the line. Paul Pierce and Ray Allen each with three fouls. Not played a lot of minutes here in the first half. Yet the Celtics have been able to cut an 18-point lead to four moments ago. It's now five with 3.7 seconds remaining. And Beasley going to the free throw line. Pierce 
comes back in as does Allen for this final play down the other end after the free throw. And I like the move of getting these guys back into the ball game. 3.7 seconds to go in the half. You never know. You wind up losing by one or two. Well, it could make a difference. The last possession of a half. Beasley hits the pair. Rondo final seconds. Rondo races up the floor. Just gets it off in time. <laughs> gets stuck. And that will end the first half. A good ending for the Celtics. 18 6 run over the last seven and a half minutes. How many halves do you think in NBA history <laughs> have ever ended with the ball getting stuck? I'm thinking the same thing. Now, if play, if it wasn't the end of the half, they'd have a jump ball. But that's the way the, <laughs> the, way the half ends. Dwayne Wade and the Heat, though, lead by six. Wade is with Lisa. Thank you, Mike. Dwayne, you guys had an 18-point lead. They've cut it to six. What changed for you guys in that quarter? Um, they, they start scoring off our turnovers. We turned the ball over too many times, and um, that's how they've been killing us in the series a lot. It was on a transition point, so we got to do a better job of taking care of the ball and getting shots. You had 14 points in the first quarter, just two in the second quarter. You missed a couple of free throws. For you personally, what do you have to get back to? Oh, I'm not worried about myself. Uh, you know, I can get hot. Uh, I only see the ball go in the basket once. So, uh, you know, the, the first quarter I came out uh, I'm aggressive like I did last game. Second quarter, I'm a little bit more passive as well. But um, I'm not worried about myself. I want to continue to make sure my teammates get good shots, and um, I'll be fine. All right. Thanks, Dwayne. Thank you. Mike. All right, Lisa. Dwayne Wade trying to make sure this is not the final game of the season for the Miami Heat. And perhaps his final game as a member of the Heat. He's a free agent, but he's not worried about that right now. Came out with a vengeance. They went up by 18. As the T-Mobile Halftime Report's coming up next, Magic Johnson will talk about the Lakers' concern. And first half analysis of Game 4. Suffolk's with a 3-0 lead in the series, trying to go for the sweep. Good comeback in the second quarter. It's a six-point game at halftime. It's time for the McDonald's I'm Loving It Highlight. Today's McDonald's I'm loving it highlights. Back in Miami, game four between the Celtics and the Heat. Boston going for the sweep. Miami hoping to extend their season. And our Popeyes first half stats. The great start for the Heat in that first quarter went up by as many as 17, increased to 18. See the good shooting. The turnovers were huge for Boston early. They had nine turnovers in that first period. Miami had seven turnovers in the second period. And right now, it's a six-point game as we get set for the third quarter. Hi again, everyone. Again, Miami came out with a real vengeance, looked very strong, especially Dwayne Wade. He came out saying, our season's not going to end today. Well, he got off to a great start because he got out in transition and got into the paint in half-court opportunities. Here you see him bringing the ball up, noticing that Rajon Rondo has his back to him and is not ready to give support on the drive. So he comes at Ray Allen full speed. He attacks Ray Allen, breaks him down with the crossover. Rondo, no help, takes the bump and the three-point play. In transition, second quarter, good adjustment by the Celtics of being more alert and aware, trapping Dwayne Wade, keeping him on the sideline, zoning up the weak side, and making the entire possession difficult. Wade, again, quick first quarter, just like in game three, slowed down in quarter two because the Celtics' defense improved dramatically. Celtics finish 18-6 run. Our Gatorade Cooler Talk, Mark, is about Kevin Garnett and how he's starting to look in rhythm. Well, absolutely. You're talking about Allen and Pierce and foul trouble they had to play through Kevin Garnett who certainly showed up big in that first half, knocking down shots. They needed his offensive presence, putting the ball on the floor, jab step, the old KG, the ability to put the ball on the floor, split guys and make plays, establish the rhythm and then the jump shot got going via pick and pop pick and roll situation so certainly a welcome sight for Doc Rivers KG offensive yep. 
Let's check in with Lisa Salters. Hey, Mike, why? Well, Doc Rivers, how they got back in it in that first half. He said he joked with me and said, we all got into the yoga position of downward dog just so we could breathe and relax a little bit. He said, seriously, though, we just slowed the game down. We stopped turning the ball over. We stopped trying to do it individually and play together. I asked him what he said to his guys in the locker room about the importance of getting it done, ending this series here today. And he said, we didn't talk about that at all. It's about our play. If we play right, that'll take care of itself. We've got to focus on the process. Uh, Lisa, yoga talk here during the NBA playoffs. We'll have uh, a look into Pilates later on in the third quarter. And one of the ways the Celtics got back into the game was the Heat turned the ball over just like the Celtics did in quarter number two. Ray Allen and Paul Pierce both with three fouls. Neither played a heck of a lot. About 13 minutes each as Arroyo knocks down the shot. 13 minutes each in that first half for Boston. That's good patience by Dwayne Wade, not trying to do too much. At some point, he's going to need other guys to make shots. We'll start early on, get on the basketball, and a royal step in rhythm. Wade had eight assists in game three. He's got four here this afternoon. Pierce. And a royal will bring it up. Allen stays on Wade, even with the three fouls. Richardson had that hot start. Had 13 points in the first quarter, didn't score in the second. O'Neal, can he get one to go? Still no. He did have a dunk. But his shooting woes are just off the charts. So Richardson looking to post up now on Allen. A quick spin move blocked by Perkins and Garnett, his sixth rebound. Here comes Rondo, three on one. Pierce gets it and throws it down. That's good transition offense by the Celtics, but there's no way you only have one guy back in transition. Carlos Arroyo was left by himself to defend in transition. You've got to prevent those layups. Just over two minutes gone by here in the third. Wade gets the post, and Wade throws it down at the other end. Rondo finding the seams, count it, and a foul. Pretty play from Rondo, and he's in double figures with 11. This is actually a bad pass on the other end to Dwayne Wade, but give him credit. Chasing down the basketball, the ability to catch and finish. Then on the other end, Rondo, the little teardrop floater, the hit on the arm of Carlos Arroyo is certainly a foul. Arroyo now compounds that and picks up a technical foul. But I think it's a double tech to go with Arroyo and Rondo. Arroyo still arguing with Billy Kennedy. Quentin Richardson trying to keep him away. So they won't shoot any technical free throws on a double technical. Instead, Rondo will shoot one shot on the personal foul. Why don't you shoot the double technicals, but you do shoot the individual technicals? Interesting point. Now you're making sense. Every I agree. once in a while. It's... I agree. Why not let both guys shoot technical fouls? Now you're making sense. It's rubbing off. What's rubbing off? My, yeah. my craziness to you or, <laughs> or your sense of, like, smarts on me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm See, I was giving Mike credit. I wasn't saying really me. I was oh. saying Mike. Five-point game here early in the third. Arroyo lost his balance, got it to Beasley. Beasley likes switching to that right hand, but a poor attempt. Shot clock at one. They're not going to get it off in time. And a 24-second violation. See, if you're Beasley, you can't flip that thing up with your right hand. Sometimes you just have to go through the contact. You cannot slide around it. Right here, momentum. you got to go up and through Garnett right there and put the onus on the officials to call it or just try to power it through. That flipping inside, not always going to get it done. That's the second time he's tried one of those shots, both ineffective. Pierce nails it. And it just keeps saying, now he didn't play a lot because of foul trouble. He looks like he's really starting to get in that rhythm. Oh, you can tell when you look at him offensively, the things he's able to do, there's no answer for it. With his size and strength, ability to score in a variety of ways. Arroyo, Arroyo, a couple of two goals here in the third, and it's back to five. You know, Arroyo, and Mark can attest to this, he's a very good pick-and-roll player. He knows how to play pick-and-roll basketball.
Garnett from outside. Kevin Garnett now six of nine from the field. Not only when you talk about a Royal, he, he also is a, a big time competitor. He's a guy that's had success. I think sometimes you can lose your confidence and, and lose some of your, your swag or, or, or energy on the floor. Let's listen to Doc Rivers' halftime message to his team. You're trying to win a world championship, when you're trying to win a game, a playoff game, it should not be easy. And you can't expect it to be easy. You got to get your hands dirty and you got to go get it. You have to go get it. All right? Wade got hit as he goes to the basket. Shot won't go. He's a little shaken up. And Mike, can we go back to the play that where the ball got deflected? Wade made a nice bounce pass to Beasley, and then Beasley, again, instead of going up strong, dished it to O'Neal, who then tried to kick it out on the perimeter. you got to have guys inside who are going to go up through people and either draw fouls or finish. It's hard enough to get the ball into the paint. If you don't get anything out of it time and time again, that's how they can push out on you more and more on the perimeter. Yeah, that was the problem the first couple of games, not getting into the paint. They had 30 points in the paint in the first half here in game four. As Wade will go to the free throw line. Arroyo and Rondo are still yapping at each other. They're going to be careful. Second technical is an automatic ejection. Quentin Richardson pretty much telling Arroyo to shut up. Now, when I'm looking at both of these guys, I think he's also telling them, hey, you a bad dude. I've watched your work. Now, we've got to step up and make plays and take pressure off of number three. He can't be the only guy out here ready to attack and make plays. You just said that to Jeff last week. You're a bad dude. Watch your work. Yeah, he was always pumping me up like that when I was coaching him. <laughs> Five point Miami lead. Ball poked away by Richardson. Richardson trying to post up. Wade on the drive. On the pull-up, tough shot, knocks it down. 22 for Wade. He's back up by seven. The only lead the Suffolk's have had was when they scored the first bucket of the game. They've trailed by as many as 18. Garnett, not that time. Beasley trying to post up down the other end. O'Neal. Perkins call for the foul. He's upset. That's four on Perkins. It looks like he may have gone straight up on this one. He certainly feels that way. That's a bump. Yeah. That's a good call. Yeah. So O'Neal to the line. Remain O'Neal. Came into this game 5 of 31 from the field. He has just, I don't even imagine the kind of numbers, historic numbers in a playoff series. Even the Kangaroo Kid had a bad playoff series, and Eddie Conlon as well. But it has been a struggle to the point where he's not playing down the stretch. He didn't play at all in the fourth quarter of game three. Wow. And he's hearing some boos. That's not going to help him. And then he commits a foul down the other end on a reach in. So O'Neal picks up the personal. See, I, if I was a fan, I may boo lack of effort, but I wouldn't boo a guy missing shots. He's not trying to miss shots. And you see the shooting numbers, just disastrous. O'Neal I don't agree. I don't agree with that. If a guy's not getting it done, if I go to a concert and the guy's not hitting notes, I'm booing. That's where we're different. Pierce, that's where you're different. <laughs> Wait for rebound. If Bruce Springsteen is giving his best and born in the USA, I'm going to say, hey, Bruce, good job, bad night. Wade, back shot won't go. Garnett pushed away, but it goes right to Perkins. Ray Allen fires away. That's good. And the Celtics continue their climb back. It's a four-point game again. Allen just his second field goal. He's been in foul problems.
Richardson steps back, nails a three. Quentin Richardson, his fourth three-pointer of the game, had that hot start. Garnett. Inside the Perkins blocked by O'Neal. The boos turn to cheers on that defensive play. Perkins and O'Neal battling. Richardson rushed that one. Pace is picked up here in the third. Rondo goes at Arroyo. Reverse. Oh, he banks it in. He just plays with such poise and confidence. Plays it at his own pace right now. Does a good job of picking and choosing when to be aggressive offensively and when to be a facilitator for everybody else on the floor. He's their leading scorer today with 14. Arroyo left open. Five minutes remain in the third. Rondo to Garnett. Garnett with the finish, and it's a three-point game. Timeout Miami. Kevin Garnett and the Celtics trying to come back from 18 down in the first half. Their point guard leading the way, Mark Jackson. Getting it done. Singing the old song, help me Rondo, help, help me Rondo. The blow by a Carlos Arroyo, the ability to finish at the cup. Outstanding job. And then you need another basket. I'm going to make a play for the big ticket. Drops it off, and then KG does the rest. He up three. LeBron James and the Cavaliers playing game four. Chicago, they lead it 2-1 of that series. That's next. The Heat's lead once 18, cut to three. They played with desperation to start the game, desperate like a team to try to avoid elimination. They need to continue it here in the second half. Right, if you want to win, you run back. And it's not going great. You see four guys on the Heat. How many are sprinting? I say one, Quentin Richardson. The other three guys, Beasley, O'Neal, Wade, in a jog. And then one-on-one, -on -one, everybody should be seeing Rondo. Jermaine O'Neal, you're the low man. You got to step over, help, and block that shot. You can't leave Carlos Arroyo on an island by himself. That's why when I look at this Heat team, if I'm going down and I'm Eric Spolstra, I'm going down with your Dennis Haslam on the floor. That's one guy that I don't have to coach energy and effort. I can live with his mistakes because he's going to leave it on the floor. And he's on the floor now. Haslam coming off the bench this season. Wade. Good defense from Ray Allen. Shot clock at five. Wade gets it inside. Haslam won't go. And Mike Haslam's an, a free agent at the end of this year as well. And he's not going to be paid big, but this guy can be a component on a championship-level team. And I think those championship-level teams need to take a big, long look at this guy. Allen hits the three. Haslam was a component on that championship team here in 2006. He's such a workhorse, and they love him here. He's a Miami native. He's very big in the community. So much charity work, he wants to stay, but who knows? As Arroyo misses, Perkins the rebound. The Celtics have come all the way back to tie the game. Rondo banks it in, and it's their first lead since 2 nothing. All the way back from 18 down. You think about it, here's a guy who doesn't shoot it outside 18 feet. So you think it would be hard for him to get to the basket. He gets it there easily. Richardson tries another, way off the mark, and Perkins the rebound. Rondo with 16 points. Goes right at Arroyo, but the pass deflected nicely. And this is where Miami's will has to stay strong. You can't have any gift. Oh, Wade! No give there. There's an answer. This is, again, good crossover. Rondo's help. Garnett late help. And Wade puts it down. You know, for all his ability and his talent and his skill, he is one of the top competitors since he's been in the league. Greg Popovich has always talked about he's the player that reminds him so much of Michael Jordan in terms of his competitive fire. Kobe Bryant's another one thrown in there. And Azure is just saying that about how they could easily lose their will 
it's almost like he senses the moment. Something has to happen here to bring us back, and he does it right there. As we talked about a bunch of times, this could be Wade's final game with the Heat. He can opt out, and he said he will. He'll test the free agent market. He's expressed his desire to stay here, but you never know. As Rondo drives, draws the foul on Haslam. And he'll go to the free throw line. Haslam disagrees as the Spolster. Three fouls on Udonis Haslam. That's a good call. After he's already picked up the ball going in his shooting motion, Haslam sliding under him. Rondo's trying to avoid the contact by sliding to his right. You're the Heat players. You have to do a better job of containing Rondo. Find a way to force him to be a jump shooter. He's getting into the paint area too often in this half. Again, remember last year, that first-round playoff series against Chicago, Kevin Garnett was out. Rondo had three triple-doubles in the seven games against Chicago. Three triple-doubles total in the playoffs. Averaged 17 a game, nearly 10 assists and 10 rebounds, two and a half steals. He played almost the entire game, it seemed, night after night. He is turning into one of the best point guards in the NBA. Chalmers is in. Rondo pokes it away. Allen comes up with it. Rondo right back to Allen and the layup. He started it at one end with a steal and then sets up his teammates in the Celtics by four. Timeout, Miami. And the crowd has gone quiet on this 13-2 run. Celtics want to take care of business, take care of this series right here this afternoon. Rondo doing a little bit of everything on both ends of the floor. Active hands, comes up with the steal. Your Ray Allen, get it back to him. Trust that he's going to make the right decision. On point pass to Ray Allen in transition. It's been Rondo putting on a clinic on both ends of the floor in this third quarter. Thanks for watching ESPN on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Boston Celtics after trailing by 18 now with a four-point lead, 2.45 remaining. Here in what could be a closeout game to complete the sweep. Rajon Rondo has been superb once again. His coach raving about the type of season he's had. Tough to go back and find a, a point guard like him that didn't have a shot. Uh, you know, he's improved his shot. But be this effective. You know, and, and he dominates games sometimes without even taking shots. You know, I think the, the switch Rondo has made since Paul and Ray and Kevin have come back healthy now, and they're all ready to play, is, you know, there were parts of the year where he had to score for us. Now he just has to do the utility things and do everything. And he's fine with it, and that's what you talked about earlier, Jeff, and that's what you're so impressed with. Here you see somehow at his size, he not only gets inside, he gets off quality shots inside. Yeah, I think it's the speed, the change of speeds, and then he has a knack for being able to get the ball up before the help gets there. He's only 6'1". Quentin Richardson the drive and gets the roll. Richardson having his best game offensively here in the series with 18. Coming up on the two-minute mark, third quarter. Anxious moments for the Heat crowd as they've seen this big lead disappear. Pierce jump shot. Beasley and Haslam grab the rebound. Wade throws it into about the third row, and then they call an offensive foul. After the turnover, Wade knocking down Davis, picking up his second. Wade talking with Billy Kennedy right there. The point Wade making, he says, hey, it's just like when Haslam was called for the block. He moved while Rondo was in the A. He felt like Glenn Davis did the same exact thing. Now on Rondo, Aslam battling Garnett. 
Pierce trying to find an opening. Garnett, good open look, nails it. Kevin Garnett, 8 of 12 from the field. And the Celtics back up by four. And that's very good patience offensively. Fronting of the low post, go to a high pick and roll, and then find the open Garnett. Beasley, the pull-up shot. If he can put the total game together with the focus, the concentration, the intensity, he is such a natural, talented scorer. The guy's ability to put the ball in the basket. That's what can be so frustrating as Pierce knocks down the three-pointer, and it's a five-point lead for the Celtics. Part of the problem, you make that point about Beasley. You don't want to be making that same statement 10 years from now. At some point, you have to get it. There's no explanation. He's too good to be to be just another guy on the floor. Wade tried the alley-oop. Haslam mistimed his jump. And 13th turnover for the Heat. How many guys get it later? Late on in their career? Yeah, I mean, how many guys, if you're saying right now he doesn't, how many guys get it in year five or year six if they haven't gotten it early? I don't think that happens. I think you're an older guy sitting on the couch saying, I could have been this. Rondo left open. Rajon Rondo having a superb game, and it's a seven-point lead. 20 points, eight assists. A couple of steals as well, and this is the largest lead of the game for the Celtics. Wade for three. Answers back. He does it again. Every time they need a big bucket, Wade supplies it. But even though it went in, that was poor clock management. He had the last shot. He took it at 14 seconds. Here's a chance to take a foul of the other heat. Oh, Pierce comes right back with a two-pointer. Emphasize your point there, Jeff, as Chalmers launches it. And that will end the third period. The Boston Celtics have come back from 18 down and will head to the fourth quarter up by six. Celtics trying to close out this first round series. The Heat, who might have a huge summer revamping of their roster, trying to extend their season. And as we head to the fourth at 77-71, this presentation of the NBA playoffs at ABC will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to American Airlines Arena, where the Heat are down by six. Eric, what has changed in the game since when you guys were up by eight? Well, we're being measured right now mentally, uh, and that's the last hurdle we have to get over to get this game. How much of this fourth quarter is just going to be about will? It's going to be a lot about our mental stability and toughness going down the stretch. All right, thanks for your time. Mike? Well, three games in the regular season. They got swept in the regular season and in the postseason here so far. And you see the third quarter, what a turnaround for the Boston Celtics. Trailing by as many as 18. Now great ball movement, high percentage shots, knocking them down. The Heat have been in a lot of the games against the Boston Celtics this year. They just can't beat them. Lost all three regular season, the first three games of this series. Now once again, going to come down to the fourth quarter. Wade gets the shot. 29 for Wade. And really, their turnovers, Miami's turnovers and their poor free throw shooting have really got them in a hole. Rondo keeps his dribble. Now drives, slips it high off the glass and just rolls off. Davis battling down low. And we're going to have a hell ball. See, to me, though, that's the difference between Michael Beasley on the floor and Jermaine O'Neal on the floor, and Haslam and Joel Anthony. It's just a different level of spirit and effort. And comes to block, Wade comes to block, and now look at the two big guys. They're the first ones on the ground. They're not waiting. And here's the thing that really bothers me even more so. If it was a two-on-two, -two, those other two guys would destroy these guys as far as talent-wise. But these two guys get it done because of their passion and commitment to do whatever it takes. Anthony wins the tip. Darrell Wright, Chalmers, Haslam, Anthony, and Wade on the floor right now for the Heat. Trying to make sure it's not the final quarter of the season. Wade again! Nails a three! And it's a one-point game! 
for Dwayne Wade. He will not go quietly here this afternoon. And Eric Spolster wanted them to be in zone, and three guys were in zone, and two guys were in man. Foul on Haslam. Well, this is good screen by Haslam, re-screening, and that's just a big-time shot by a big-time player. Coming off to his left, the balance, that's well defended. Sticks his follow-through. That's beautiful to watch. He has their last eight points. As Rasheed Wallace will shoot. Haslam's foul, his fourth. Like, you look at those numbers for Wade. Those numbers are, in, they are incredible. He's averaging nearly 30 points a game in this series on 58% shooting by a guard. And against the defense that often he sees double teams. I mean, he's obviously the number one guy they defend against as Haslam gets the rebound. And if LeBron James wasn't a free agent, Dwayne Wade still allows you to clear space. If it was just LeBron, it was just Dwayne Wade being a free agent this year, he's an explanation to clear space. He's that good. Wade again. Puts it in. Wade lighting it up. Miami back up by one. 35 points. And the Celtics bench has let them down. And a foul on Darrell Wright as he knocks down Pierce. I don't really know if it's the Celtics bench. This is just outstanding offense by Dwayne Wade. You're talking about spectacular plays. Give him credit. Pick and roll. Allen fights over. That's a tough, tough shot. Here's my here's my thing. If I'm Doc Rivers, at some point, I'm double teaming, forcing somebody else to make a play. You've proven yourself, Mr. Wade. No, that's what I'm saying. you got to be up, if you're the big man, more to take the rhythm out of that jump shot. Pierce, good help from Anthony, but he finds Wallace. Celtics really being very patient offensively in finding the open man. And, and I like Doc Rivers going back to Ray Allen early in this quarter because Ray Allen has done a good job on Wade. And Kevin Garnett stands up and tells his team, look, when he comes off the screen, let's trap it. Let's get the ball out of his hand. Chalmers, that's a three. 82-80. Miami battling back after blowing an 18-point lead. Boy, you got to love their fight here. Down 0-3, blew the huge lead, and here they are battling to keep their season alive. And that's the power of the three-point shot, too. Wallace. Can't connect, Wade the rebound. Wade hits it out for Haslam. Tough shot from Haslam. Joel Anthony had it. Gets it back. Wade for three. Bang! What a performance from Dwayne Wade. 38 points. Timeout Boston. You talk about Wade, give me the basketball and get out of my way. You know the rules. Hand down, man down. Enjoying his zone. Have a good time, Mr. Wade. Thank you for the clinic. Those on the beach are missing an extraordinary performance down here in Miami. Let's look at our NBA calendar. Tonight on TNT, a couple of game fours, Dallas and San Antonio, Denver and Utah. NBA TV Monday, Atlanta and Milwaukee. And then next Sunday, maybe some game sevens, maybe some game ones. We'll have to wait and see what happens, including what happens here this afternoon. The Heat facing elimination, the end of their season. Well, they are fighting back, led by the extraordinary Dwayne Wade. As we look at our GMC Sierra game track, 38 points for Wade. He's hit three for three from downtown here in the fourth quarter. And the Miami Heat showing some real heart here this afternoon. He cleared the beach, Mike. The beach is empty. This is one of the greatest performances you'll ever see with a team down. There's every reason to give in, give up. This guy is just so good. It's almost like you take it for granted. I almost stormed the court right there. <laughs> Pierce. 
Celtics have been able to answer throughout this series at that time a turnover. 15 Boston turnovers, nine coming in that first period. Right to Wade. Wade falling away. He's human. Has won the rebound. A new 24. Give yeah, it the extra effort by Joel Anthony to get Wade the last three. And then Udonis has one there. Chalmers drives, lost it. And they say last touch by Boston. Miami will inbound with nine left on the 24. And give Eric Spolster a lot of credit. Last game took Dwayne Wade out to start the fourth quarter. This game, he says, no way. I'm going down with my horses. Leaves them in the ball game, and Wade has responded. Chalmers off the inbounds, right into the hands of Wade. Wade fakes, fires, draws the foul. Almost a four-point opportunity. Instead, he'll shoot three free throws. Ray Allen not happy with the call. Neither is Doc Rivers, but Wade will shoot. Four on Allen. Well, when Wade pulls up going to his left, he oftentimes pumps fakes. I couldn't tell right there if that's a good call. That's a tough call. Because I think the Celtics throughout the series have done a great job of staying down on that hard pump fake off the dribble when Wade got, has gone to his left. Will this be his final game in a Miami Heat uniform? He's doing everything possible to make sure it doesn't happen. He's being cheered on by his mom, Jolinda, who's been going crazy here in the stands watching her son put on just an extraordinary performance. I was telling Mark at the break, if I was his mom, I'd be rushing the court right now. That's my boy. Everyone would know I'm his mother. Oh, and Wade's a guy that actually bought his mom as well documented a church. And you can tell she's over there fully in prayer. And he has responded. You see the jewelry. That's the 2006 championship ring that's on her finger. Wade has 17 of their last 20 points, 41 for the game. And the Heat back up by eight. A 14-point turnaround here in the fourth quarter. Seeing Wade's guard Rondo right now and giving help off of Rondo as Rondo wins the loose ball battle. Rondo gets inside, blocked by Anthony. Joel Anthony, very big performance, huge minutes off the bench. Wade kicks it out for Chalmers. Chalmers on the drive. Pull up jump shot. Can't hit. Perkins the rebound. Still plenty of time remaining. Pierce. Offensive foul. As he pushed Chalmers down. Paul Pierce picks up his fourth. So Pierce, Perkins, and Ray Allen all with four fouls. And on the heat, the way that the, the Celtics are playing pick and rolls right now, looking to trap and get the ball out of Wade's hands, I'd much rather a 1 4 set where Ray Allen is defending him one on one at the top of the key and give Wade space to make a play. And I might trap him earlier, even if they do that. There's no way he's going to be the shooter right now. I'm going to make it go to Chalmers, Wright, Haslam, or Anthony. I can't live with him shooting the ball right now. Wade's season high during the regular season was 44 against the Celtics. Chalmers on the drive. Nice banker, Mario Chalmers. And it's a 10-point Miami lead. Rondo. Wade guarding Rondo. Wade, the only starter out there right now for Miami. Garnett, the high release. Kevin Garnett's had a terrific game as well. 18 and 9. Everything paling in comparison to Wade. But the Celtics balance is exactly what they love. Wade to Haslam. Foul call against 
Rondo trying to fight over the screen. Rondo picks up his second. Talk about Thomas putting the ball on the floor. Good job of being aggressive and attacking, not allowing him to play one on five. And Miss Wade says, that's what I'm talking about. Help my baby. Wade again hits another three. What an explosion from Dwayne Wade. 44 points, 17 here in the fourth quarter, and there's still six minutes to play. And he's missed free throws tonight, too. Plus, he's been very disruptive off Rondo. Ball through the hands of Perkins out to Ray Allen. Allen calmly puts up the three. That won't go. And the shots are not falling right now. As we've got a loose ball foul against the Heat. And the way it goes down. And Darrell Anthony's hobbled. Darrell Wright, I'm sorry, is hobbled a little bit. And Quentin Richardson already went into the... Timeout. Let's take a breath. Wow. This is a thing of beauty. You talk about Wade, Ray Allen playing him, falls asleep, knocks down the jumper, and look at that. Mama, there goes that man. <laughs> Coming up, the second game of our doubleheader, Derrick Rose and the Bulls got that win in game three. Game four from Chicago. The Cavs still lead it two games to one. Rose has been special. As they look, who's primed to perform, presented by Gatorade. Some great individual performances in that series. LeBron James and Derrick Rose, that game coming up next. But you want to talk about a special player leading his team, willing his team in what could be an elimination game. Dwayne Wade, just a remarkable performance. Allen. Allen sees an opening, kicks it out. Rondo, Rondo for three. That's a one. His second three-pointer of the game. That's a shot you can live with. Dwayne Wade is playing great defense, not just offensively, but he's not allowing Rondo to beat him on, on Rondo's terms. He's forcing him to beat him with the jump shot. Wade doesn't go, but he'll go to the line. This is the most points he's ever scored in a playoff game. He's got 44. It's the most points in the 2010 playoffs so far. Jason Richardson and Carmelo Anthony each had 42-point games. 17 of them have come here in the fourth quarter. And people talk about, and Coach, I'm sure you've been involved with this, people talk about how great players make others around them better. And you think, okay, well, how do they do that? By making plays for them? They, you can't minimize just that side of it because this is a team that needed a boost. And Dwayne Wade, in all of his greatness, made guys around him better because he inspired them to believe that we have a chance to win this game. Right, down six, going into the fourth. If, if he wasn't on the floor, I think it would have gone the other way and it would have gone that way quickly. But because... He went two-point jump shot, then three-point jump shot, then another three right off the bat. Now they're playing with a cushion. And again, we talk so much about Dwayne Wade and his, his skills and his talent, but his passion and his hatred of losing was such a big part, maybe his number one strength. Doesn't care they're down all three, just battles. And again, what could be his final game in a Heat uniform. But, Mike, it's, it's also... Think about what he was when he came into this league. He was a driver slasher with a questionable jump shot. And now you're seeing a guy who's shooting the ball so much better because of the work he put in with Eric Spolster when Spolster was an assistant. And it's not like we haven't seen this type of performances from him before. The finals in 06 when he averaged almost 35 a game to bring the heat. Their championship, Darrell Wright, line drive jumper. Back to 11 with 440 to play. And what the Celtics went to right away is when Dwayne Wade brought the ball over half court, they looked to trap him. Other guys have to be aggressive offensively, and Wright made them pay. Rondo, open look. Haslam the rebound. But going back to Mark's point, Wade is roaming taking Allen out of catch and shoot plays. If that's the shot they're going to give up, they're going to be fine with that. Aslan won't go. Anthony battling on the boards, but Perkins comes away. Still plenty of time. 
And I like what the Celtics decided to do. Get that ball out of his hand. Allen nails the three. And just like that, it's back to eight. What a wild fourth quarter. Boston led by six to begin the fourth period. Miami led by Dwayne Wade and led by as many as 11. And they'll call timeout now. They've had a number of close games against the Celtics this season. Three in the regular season. The first three games of this series. They have not been able to close out with a victory in any of them. But Dwayne Wade trying to make sure this series heads back to Boston. A playoff career high, 45. And Jolinda Wade leading the cheers here in Miami. Miami, the Heat with an eight-point lead with 349 remaining. Dwayne Wade has done it all here this afternoon. Well, it's a jump shot clinic. Five threes coming off the left-hand dribble. He'd rather go left into his jump shot. You're seeing balance. You're seeing a follow-through. This is not what he was able to do when he came into the league. He has improved his mechanics, his balance, and his follow-through. That's why he's such a dual threat. Five threes. Incredible performance. Well, no question about it. Interesting substitution by, substitution by Eric Spolster. Takes out Anthony and brings Beasley back into the ball game. And I think what he's trying to do is downsize because Finley came in at the four. Ball last touch by Rondo. Wade saying to Beasley, be ready for that pass with six on the shot clock. But I'm going to be say this. I'd be happy with Udonis Haslam guarding Finley. And I totally agree. That's why I would have kept the same lineup on the floor because of their energy and what they were doing on the floor. Six to shoot. Right. Beasley comes to the ball. Chalmers. Wild shot. Had to put it up. Doesn't hit the rim. And Garnett the rebound. And they blew the whistle. 24 second violation. And this is a great learning tool, it, it, uh, teaching tool. I'm Eric Spolster when you talk about Beasley and Jermaine O'Neal. Guys saying, I'm struggling to find my shot. Well, guess what? Udonis Haslam and, and Joel Anthony gave us an opportunity to win this ball game and didn't make a shot. It wasn't about making a shot. It was about what they did, the intangible, the little things, put us in position to move on. Celtics, do they have one more run in them? They have plenty of time. Allen looking for Garnett. Wade is on him. There's the double. Ball deflected. That's what you're talking about, Mark. The little plays, the little hustle plays. Wade scoring the points. But he's got four guys out there playing just as hard. Doing a great job of multiple effort plays. You're talking about active hands and then willing to sacrifice your body. These type of plays put you in position to win a ball game. Outstanding energy, outstanding hustle across the board for the Heat. Quentin Richardson comes in. For Beasley. So now both teams are playing small with just one big on the floor. Again, Wade on Garnett. Finley, open look. Finley hits the three, and it's back to five as we approach the three-minute mark. And that's why I'm not playing small. I'm staying big so I don't have to trap off of shooting. Wade has only missed one shot here in the fourth. Four of four from downtown. Looking for the opening again. Back out Richardson. Richardson off the dribble. Looks to back it. Won't go. Garnett the rebound. Ray Allen on the drive. Foul by Darrell Wright in the act of shooting. And he'll go to the line. And right now, Mike, with Wade handling the ball, they're able to come up and take it out of his hands. One counter when teams are doing that to your best player is let Chalmers go back to handling and run Wade, start him on the baseline, and then bring him to the ball so that they can't see the double team coming from when he's handling the ball. This is the first game of our doubleheader. Second one is coming up from Chicago. LeBron James and the Cavaliers up two to one, but the Bulls an impressive victory in game three. Chicago will try and tie that series up. Second game coming up from the United Center. And just here this afternoon, this is the beauty of the NBA. Here's the game. You come in thinking, up oh, three nothing. This series is over. Yet you buy a ticket, you come to this arena, and you're watching just one of the most incredible performances you can possibly see in a playoff game.
Wayne Wade giving it his all, lost it out of bounds there. It just goes to show you, you never know from one night to the next, one game to the next in the NBA. But his team still has work to do to make sure they force a game five. It's only a four point game with two and a half to play. Ray Allen. Rondo, nice ball fake. And Rondo misses the layup. Haslam the rebound, his 10th of the game. Haslam hasn't scored, but he's done what he always does for this team. Fight and fight. They're waiting far too long to get into what they want to get into. Chalmers. Back out to Wade. Lost it. Pierce throws it to Rondo. Rondo pass to Allen. Allen stripped by Wade, but a reach in foul. And the Celtics can get closer with 150 remaining. But I love the hustle of Darrell Wright right there. There was a turnover. This man was sprinting the floor. He wasn't running, he wasn't trotting, and he wasn't jogging. Give the effort like that, and you can live with the result. Allen, one of the best free throw shooters in the history of the NBA. He's missed one earlier. 15 total points for Allen here today, and misses another. Both teams with multiple timeouts remaining. Celtics have a foul to give. Two misses for Ray Allen, a 90% free throw shooter. And Dwayne Wade calls timeout. 146 remaining in the fourth. Is it 146 remaining in the heat season? Dwayne Wade doing everything possible to make sure it doesn't happen. And the unexpected happening here. Two missed free throws for Allen. Heat ball and a four-point lead when we come back. Point deficit to a four-point advantage, and they only have five seconds to get the ball across. And I'm not sure. Yeah, Chalmers huh? finally realized it. <laughs> I think you got to do a better job of putting it in Wade's hand quicker, which they found a way to do that. Wade to Haslam. Darrell Wright trying four on the shot clock. Right shot short. Beasley puts it in. Michael Beasley with the effort. And the lead back up 98-92. 15 points for Beasley this afternoon. Allen on the drive. Michael Finley, short. Garnett the rebound. Nearly taken away. A little extra pushing and shoving as they battle. Let's see what the call is from Billy Kennedy. They call it a jump or a foul. They call a foul. And it's going to go against Miami. Garnett will shoot. The foul is on Chalmers. Garnett, first free throw of the night. Garnett, who's had a strong game, 11 rebounds in addition to those 18 points. Game five will be Tuesday night in Boston if the Heat hold on. And the free throw shooting, two of seven in the fourth quarter. Ray Allen did something I'm not sure he's ever done in his NBA career, which has missed three straight free throws. The winner of this series will play the winner of the Cleveland-Chicago series. Game four just tipping off on ESPN2 right now. As Cleveland leads it two games to one, game four right now on ESPN2. It'll follow us on ABC after this one. You know, what a game we've been treated to, what a performance we've been treated to by a special player. Dwayne Wade and the Heat trying to extend their season. Fans trying to rattle Garnett. Another missed free throw as we come up on a minute remaining. Well, I'm here down as Haslam. I have to be ready to catch and shoot. He's been too passive off of his catches. He's a knockdown mid-range jump shoot. Wade goes back door and a reach in foul. They're not in the penalty. Next one. So Miami will take it out with 59.2 remaining.
Way to have that calf injury at the end of game three has been fine here this afternoon. Celtics do not need to foul yet. Still a two possession game. Beasley to the basket, right handed. No! Tip won't go and Garnett the rebound. Dunk the ball. Pierce pulls up. Three pointer won't go. Tony Allen had it, lost it. Haslam with the save. Here comes Wade. Wade to the basket. And he's fouled with 34.6 remaining. You've got to love the energy and effort of Haslam. Rather than watching the basketball go out of bounds, chases it down and throws it into Dwayne Wade. Those are winning type of plays. You want to win? Don't tell me about it. Show me you want to win. And Haslam going after the basketball. High IQ throws it inbound. Outstanding job. And I love what Wade does. It's not time to showboat. No time for out of you. Put the ball down and make a play. Causing Pierce to foul. Here's Dwayne Wade. All seven of his years in the NBA here in Miami. Won a championship in 2006. The finals MVP. A six-time All-Star. Franchise leader in points and assists and steals. He's the face of the franchise. He has expressed a desire to stay, but he said he will test the free agent market. Well, he is rewarding the Heat fans with just an incredible performance here this afternoon. I can't imagine him playing any place else. Misses the second one, but he's got 46 points. 19 in the fourth quarter. There's the man that will sign him to a contract if he stays. Eight up by seven. 92 Dwayne Wade with the 19 points in the fourth and 46 for the game as we said before you just never know when you go into an NBA arena what you're going to see a 3-0 game thinking that Boston Celtics might close this one out the series is over but Dwayne Wade had other things in mind this is one of the great playoff performances I've ever seen especially when you talk about your team on the ropes Looking like they had quit in them. A great player elevated the play of everybody else on the floor. Outstanding job by Wade. Rondo. Ray Allen. Quick release. Can't get it to go. Richardson outlet. He's fouled. And his hand is hurting. He outletted that ball. He, his hand was hurting. But another great disruption by Dwayne Wade coming off of Rondo to contest Ray Allen's three-point shot. And you know what? If I'm Pat Riley right after the game, I go to midcourt and retire this guy's number. <laughs> I take the jersey off of him, and I string it up on a rope, and I move Hardaway and Maureen's jersey aside. Meanwhile, Richardson has played a good game. 18 points, had that big first quarter to help the Heat get that huge early lead that they obviously needed. Yeah, and Eric Spolster was saying before the game, we haven't figured out how to beat this team yet. Well, he got it now. Yeah, get uh, Wade 46. <laughs> do something historic. He said their goal, win one game. We can handle that. We're not thinking about history and coming back from 0-3. We just need to win one game. They're on the verge of doing that right now. Pierce can't connect Richardson, the rebound, and that'll do it. There'll be a game five in Boston as Dwayne Wade turns in one of the more remarkable playoff performances you'll ever see, 46 points. And the Heat finally beat the Celtics. Once again, the final score.